Good evening, brethren. Tonight we're going to study Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 7, verse 1. And it came to be when the wall was rebuilt that I set up the doors and the gatekeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed. And I put my brother Hanani in command of Jerusalem and Hananiah, the head of the palace, for he was a trustworthy man and feared Elohim more than many. Hananiah, whom Yahweh favors, Hanani, my favor. So look how favor is all over the place, which is what we receive through Mashiach. Favor, his favor. And I put my brother Hanani in command of Jerusalem and Hananiah, the head of the palace, for he was a trustworthy man and feared Elohim more than many. And I said to them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot. Let not the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot. And while they are standing by, let them shut the doors and bolt them and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, each at his post and each in front of his own house. This is interesting because it is a saying, do not open when light, is out open when the sun is already felt by its heat. So it connects with the fact that the two witnesses come for the end times as a thief in the night, but then the next day begins during the sixth seal, which is the seventh millennium, the Shabbat. And that will be the beginning of light of the Shabbat, but it won't be um, hot in the sense of the light that will be shining during the millennium from the almighty will make this earth be completely different than what it is now. So as he said here, and I said to them, let not the gates of Jerusalem in this case, which with what I'm saying, pretty much let not the gates of the new world be open until the sun is hot. So even though, even though the seventh millennium, the Shabbat begins on the sixth seal, we won't enter the kingdom and that reality until the last plagues in which the heat of the sun will be felt on this world happen. So, and I said to them, let not the gates of Jerusalem be open until the sun is hot. And while they are standing by, let them shut the doors and bolt them and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem, each at his post and each in front of his own house. And the city was wide on both sides and great. But the people in it were few, and the houses were not rebuilt. The people in it were few, like the chosen few. Even though the house, I mean, the city was great on both sides. And the city was wide on both sides, on both sides and great. But the people in it were few, and the houses were not rebuilt. In a way, just to go with everything that I've been saying, Look how in the beginning it said that the gates were placed. I mentioned in the previous chapter that the gates would represent the seal on their foreheads to be able to go through into the next reality in which they, the chosen few, will receive new bodies. The body is the house of the soul. So here he's saying, now there were gates, but there were no houses. So it will be like saying, now we are in the trumpets, but there are no bodies still. So we haven't received the new bodies yet, pretty much, during the trumpets, because that happens on the seventh trumpet. I hope that's clear. So, and my Elohim put, in, put it into my heart to gather the nobles and the deputy rulers and the people in order to be registered by genealogy. Interesting, because as we know, the 144,000 who are sealed, represented by the gates, are from the twelve tribes of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe, as we see in Revelation 7. So it is as being registered by genealogy, even if they don't know it yet, the Almighty would be registering them through genealogy. And my Elohim put into my heart, put it into my heart to gather the nobles and the deputy rulers and the people in order to be registered by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of those who had come up at the beginning and I found written in it, these are the sons of the province who came back from the captivity of the exiles, whom 
Nebuchadnezzar, the sovereign of Babel, had exiled, and who returned to Jerusalem and Yehuda, each to his city. So, I repeat that verse. These are the sons of the province who came back from the captivity of the exiles, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the sovereign of Babel, had exiled, and who returned to Jerusalem and Yehuda, each to his city, who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ram, Yah, Nahamani, Mordechai, Bilshan, Misperet, Big Y, Nehum, Baana, the number of the men of the people of Israel. Oh, just a second. Let me go back a little bit. Here we, we have verse 7, who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah. So here clearly we have Nehemiah and Zerubbabel as two different people. And I say that because there is an opinion in Judaism that they are one person. Uh, that Nehemiah was another name of Zerubbabel. In that case, this Nehemiah would be another one, of course. Uh, but um, obviously, I incline a little bit to the fact that they are two different people. The fact that they in Judaism seem, well, some of them see Nehemiah as Zerubbabel, I believe has to do with the many connections that we see in those two um, people, because Nehemiah, as we have seen so far, represents the last, just like Zerubbabel in the book of Zechariah represents the last. So that's why there are so many connections between Nehemiah and Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel means born in Babel. Now we have here Yeshua, which is interesting because that's how uh, many people call the Messiah. Yeshua, verse 7, says, who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua. Um, some write it a bit, uh, well, yeah, some write it a, a little different, but I think most people write it this way when it comes to one of the false names of the Messiah. They write Yeshua. This would be or would have been the name of this person, Yeshua, who in the book of Zechariah, and I guess this is important to mention it, so let's go to Zechariah. Well, here we have Zerubbabel. Here we see, like I mentioned in this chapter that I saw here, I didn't show it, but if you were quick to see, the name Zerubbabel appeared because this book is from that same time. Here we have, and you shall take the silver and gold, make a crown, and set it on the head of Yahushua. Here they write it wrong, but Yahushua, the son of Yahud Sadak, the high priest. So here we have Zerubbabel and Yeshua. This Yeshua, who was a friend of Zerubbabel, was the high priest when they were in Babel. And that Yeshua was used by the Almighty as a prophetical sign for him to represent the second coming of Messiah. And I say second coming of Messiah, even though I normally say that different because it is, in this case, the name of the Messiah, but representing the second manifestation, and I'll explain that in a moment. This is verse 11. In Hebrew, we have that it says, and he took silver and gold and he made crowns, and he made crowns um, well, let's see, in, the head, in the head of Yahushua. So here we have Yahushua, the name of the Messiah, Yahushua. So in one In Nehemiah, who is a book that is part of the Ketubim, the writings, we have that the name of this person was Yeshua. They translate that as Jesus. Yeshua, right? We see it here. But in the book of Zechariah, since it is the book of a prophet, Yahweh used this man as a sign, as a prophetical sign. So he gave him an extra two letters to the name and even wrote the name in a different way because he would have the same first letter, but then he added the hey and the vav, which make Yahoo 
which comes from Yahweh. And then the Sheen and the Ain. And we have Yahushua, whom they called also wrongly Yahshua. So the name of that person was Yeshua, but as a prophetical sign, Yahweh changed his name to Yahushua. So we see that it says, and you shall take silver and gold, make a crown, a crown, because now he's coming as a king and set it on the head of Yahushua, the name of the first, the son of Yahud Sadak, Yahweh is justice, righteousness. So when he comes as a king to bring the righteousness of Yahweh, Yahushua right now is the high priest, but now he's going to be given a crown to bring justice. And shall speak to him saying, thus said Yahweh of hosts saying, see the man whose name is the branch. This is huge. So Yahweh gave him the name Yahushua. We see it written in Hebrew. And then Yahweh said, see the man whose name is the branch. So Mashiach, Mashiach's name would be the name shown in this chapter, Yahushua. Is that clear? Now, the fact that it says branch, the branch, shows that it is a prophecy of the last. That's why he's given a crown and he brings the justice, the righteousness, for Mashiach brought mercy, salvation, the first. So see the man whose name is the branch. The last comes as a branch to speak of the name of Mashiach, give testimony of Yahushua. So we, this is an, like one of those chapters when people say, and where in the scripture does it say that Yahushua is the name? <laughs> this is another one of those chapters. The name Yahushua is written in Hebrew and Yahweh is saying this is the name of him who will become the branch. Like I said, Mashiach came and he said, I am the root. The last is the branch. The last is as the descendant of Yosef, whose name was Hoshea, and then was changed to Yahushua for him to also become a prophetical sign. So just like this, Yahushua, also the Yahushua known as Joshua, they are both a representation of the first and the last. Like I was saying earlier, what the first fulfills physically, the last fulfills spiritually. So Yahushua is the name of the first. Yahushua ben Nun. Yahushua is the name of the first. But his genes are um, genes of the last because he's a descendant from Yahushua ben Nun. Here we have a high priest, therefore he was a Levite. But he has the name of the Messiah. But he is the branch, so he represents the last. I hope this understood. So going back to Nehemiah, I repeat, his name was Yeshua, but Yahweh changed it to Yahushua in order to give a prophecy in the book of Zechariah. Just like the name of Hosea was changed to Yahushua in order to give a prophecy. And the fact that we have here Yeshua and here Yahushua shows that this Shin Ain is pronounced as it, if it had a vav between the two letters, and that makes it Shua, not like some people pronounce it, Yahusha, just in case. So going back to Nehemiah, verse 7. Who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordechai, Bilshan, Misperet, Big White, Nehum, Baana, the number of the men of the people of Israel, sons of Parosh, 2,172. 2,172. Sons of Shephatiah, 372. Sons of Arach, 652. Like I said, next week we'll do the names. And during the millennium, we'll do the numbers. Because <laughs> obviously there are... <laughs> 
uh, also revelations through the numbers mentioned here next to the names. Sons of Arach, 652. Sons of Pahat Moab, of the sons of Yeshua and Yoab, 2,818. Sons of Elam, 1,254. Sons of Zatu, 845. Sons of Sahai, 760. Sons of Binui, 648. Sons of Bebai, 628. Sons of Asgad, 2,322. Sons of Adonikam, 667. Sons of Bigwai, 2,067. Sons of Adin, 655. Sons of Ater, of Hizkiah, 98. Sons of Hashum, 328. Sons of Betsai, 324. Sons of Harif, 112. Sons of Gibbon, 95. Men of Beit Lechem and Netofa, 188. Men of Anatot, 128. Men of Beit Azmewet, 42. Men of Kiryat Yarim, Kefira and Beirot, 743. Men of Ramah and Geba, 621. Men of Migmas, 122. Men of Betel and I, 123. Men of the other Nebo, 52. Men of the other Nebo, 52. Once again, the 52 would connect with Sun and Eliyahu and Nebo, for instance, is the name of the mountain in which Moshe was buried. And pretty much means his prophet. So his prophet Moshe, who would now come as a son, the other Nebo, <laughs> the other Moshe. Men of the other Nebo, 52. Sons of the other Elam, 1,254. Sons of Harim, 320. Sons of Yericho, 345. Sons of Lot, Hadid, and Ono, 721. Sons of Senna, 3,930. The priests, sons of Yadaya, of the house of Yeshua, 973. 973. Sons of Imer, 1,052. Sons of Pashur, 1,247. Sons of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, sons of Yeshua, of Kadmiel, of the sons of Chodewa, 74. The singers, sons of Asaf, 148. The gatekeepers, sons of Shalom, sons of Ater, sons of Talmon, sons of Akub, sons of Hatita, sons of Shobai, 138. The Netinim, sons of Tesiha, sons of Hasufa, sons of Tabo, Tabaot, sons of Keiros, sons of Sia, sons of Padon, sons of Lebana, sons of Hagaba. Sons of Salmai, sons of Hanan, sons of Gidel, sons of Gahar, sons of Reaya, sons of Retzin, sons of Nekoda, sons of Gazam, sons of Uza, sons of Paseach, sons of Bezai, sons of Meunim, sons of Nefishesim, Nefishesim, sons of Bakbuk, sons of Hakufa, sons of Harhur, sons of Bat Batslith, sons of Mehida, sons of Harsha, sons of Barkos. Sons of Sisera, Sons of Tema, Sons of Netziya, and Sons of Hatifa. The Sons of Shalomo's servants, Sons of Sotai, Sons of Soferet, Sons of Perida. Sons of Yaala, Sons of Darkon, Sons of Gidel, Sons of Shefat, Shefadia, Sons of Hatil, Sons of Pokeret, of Sebaim, Sons of Amon. All the Netinim and the sons of Shalomo's servants were 392. These were the ones who came up from Tel Mela, Tel Harsha, Kerub, Adon, and Emer. But they were unable to show their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. So, and these were the ones who came up from Tel Mela, Tel Harsha, Kerub, Adon, and Emer. Tel Harsha, Kerub, Adon, and Imer. 
but they were unable to show their father's house. They were unable to prove that they were children of Telmela. And their seed, whether they were of Israel. So they weren't able to show that they came from Jacob. It says, sons of Delayah, sons of Tobiah, sons of Nekodah, 642. And of the priests, sons of Habayah, sons of Kots, sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Giladite, and was called by their name. So Barzillai took this name because he took a wife from the daughters of Barzillai, the Gil Giladite, and was called by their name. Just because of that mention, let me just look at the name. Barzillai means my iron. This is iron. Lee is pretty much for me, or the iron that is for me. Well, actually, yeah, Barzell, as you see here. Barzell is iron, so this is my iron. As we know, iron represents Rome in the negative. In the positive, it represents the leader of Jerusalem as he comes like a iron horn, mentioned in the prophet Micah. So, Barzillai, and of the priests, sons of Habaya, sons of Kot, sons of Barzillai, my iron, who took a wife of the daughters of my iron, the Giladite, and was called by their name. Kots is um, thorns. Iron is Rome. We'll see that next week, I know, but as we know, Rome was the one who put um, thorns on Mashiach. So thorns plays by iron, by Rome. Havaya. just to make sure that is the quotes that I'm thinking of. Uh, Habaya means Yahweh has hidden and quotes thorn. So Yahweh has hidden the one who was surrounded by thorns from Rome. Yahweh hid him at the right hand of the father in the heavens. And since I saw that, let me just real quick look at this. And these were the ones who came from Tel Melach. Since we see that they were unable to show their father's house. So let me see the names in the 61 real quick. So we have Tel Melach, which is Mount of Salt. Then Tel Harsha, Mount of, deaf, of the Deaf Mute. It's interesting because it kind of seems like the many. That's why they are unable to show their father's house. They are unable to show their connection with the, with the Father Almighty through Mashiach because they have rejected the name of the Son. Instead, they have followed the Kerub. Uh, Kerub is a covering. They write it here as blessing. But what I meant is the Kerub from Ezekiel 28, which is Lucifer. Lucifer is called a Kerub in Ezekiel 28. They have followed the Kerub, and that's why they have become deaf and mute. They cannot hear the, the true revelation. They cannot hear the Father, the voice of the Good Shepherd, and they are not able to speak the word of Yahweh. They are unable to speak the true doctrine, for they speak lies, which are as an illusion, and therefore as nothing. So they have become deaf and mute for following the Kerub. So a mount of salt, they were like Mashiach told us that they were, we were supposed to be, we are supposed to be the salt of the earth. So the mount of salt became a mount of deaf and mute. So the congregation that Yahushua built through the apostasy became deaf and mute for following the Kerub wanting to receive the blessing from it and become powerful or a sovereign. So the mound of salt that were supposed to be the congregation became a mount of deaf and mute people to the apostasy for following the Kerub, just to show 
you see Kerub, Kerubim, Angelic Beam, etc. So the congregation that was supposed to be a mount of salt became the mount of the deaf and mute, for they followed the Kerub as if he was the Adon. They followed the Kerub as sovereign, as Adon. Or they followed the Kerub to receive authority, to receive power in this world, in this reality from that angel, which is the Elohim of this world. Uh, in the positive, we could say, um, through the salt, which is wisdom, those who were deaf and mute will receive the blessing and strength from the Adon. They will become kings and queens. But as I was saying, it could be connected to the many. And well, he had said, as in he prophesied, he said that that would be so. And like I was saying, connecting it to the many because of the fact that they were unable to show their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. That's why the Mount of Salt became a mount, a mount of the deaf and mute for following a Kerub, a Kerub as the Adon, like he said they would. So they were unable to show their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. Now the sons of Delayah, sons of Tobiah, sons of Nekodah, 642. And of the priests, sons of Habayah, sons of Kot, sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Giladite, and was called by their name. These sought their register among those who were counted by genealogy, but it was not found. So they were barred from the priesthood as defiled. So since they were not able to show who they came from, they were taken out of the priesthood. They were unable to be priests, just like the many, for not having that connection with Messiah, even though they claim to believe in him, they won't be able to become kings and priests. So they will only be the people of Israel instead of being the priests and kings of. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most set apart gifts until a priest stood up with the Urim and Tumim. So pretty much saying, until we have a priest who can use the Urim, the Tumim, in order to figure out if you are right or wrong, you shouldn't eat from the most apart food which was given to the priests. And the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most apart gifts until a priest stood up with the Urim, the Tumim. All the assembly together was 42,360. All the assembly together was 42,000. The 42 connects with one of the names of Elohim, one of the names, well, one of the titles of the Most High, 42. Also with the 42 months during which the beast will rule. But like I said, in this sense, since it is positive because it's talking about the people of Israel, 42,000 connects with the title of Elohim, one of the titles that has 42 letters. Well, it is said that there is a name of 42 letters, but also there is a title that has the numerical value 42. So, and the assembly together was 42,360. 360 like the year, the, the number of days in the calendar. We have 364, but those four are not accounted during, uh, within the 360 degrees through which the sun goes during the year, because those other four days have to do with the changing of seasons, not of degrees. So 360 connects with the year. 42 connects with the months in which the beast will rule, but also with one of the names of the Most High. Ties their male and female servants. These were 7,337. And they had 245 men and women singers. Their horses were 736. Their mules, 245. Camels, 435. Donkeys, 6,720. And some of the heads of the father's houses contributed to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas 
50 basins, and 530 priestly garments. Some of the heads of the father's house gave to the treasury of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,200 silver minus. And the rest of the people gave 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minus, and 67 priestly garments. So the priests and the Levites and the gatekeepers and the singers and some of the people and the Nethinim and old Israel dwelt in their cities. So pretty much like when we are able to establish the kingdom and we'll have the few and the many and the nations leaving each and everyone in their cities. So that's how that chapter ends. Like I said, next week we'll see the, the meanings of the names in order to see the revelation that we find through those meanings.